वर्णिवेशमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदन महम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी और बिलोट घनश्याम महाराज पूज्य भात गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिज जय स्वामी नारायण today we are going to discuss something about divinity and humanity meaning perceive or imbibe divinity even in the human like action of god as, as well as bhagwan's divine personalities like great saints first of all let me clear what is divinity and what is human like traits first of all divinity divinity means any action or anything which happen in this world which is not in our hand meaning no any ordinary man can do that action or that thing that action and thing which we call is at divinity now humanity means human like actions if, uh, in god whether god has a uh, tremendous strength divine powers man other virtues but still as he manifest on this earth as a human so he definitely behave as a human he also sometimes become feel some fearness from others and he also become hungry in this way every human like action what we feel the same thing happen same thing we can see in the form of god when he is as a human now when bhagwan manifest on this earth and he behaved as an ordinary human being then at that time to see and f- experience some divinity even in such kind of human like action of god that is the most important thing and that is the most in- interesting thing for every spiritual aspirant because when a spiritual aspirant thinks any human traits in god's action that will very very dangerous for his spiritual life that's why bhagwan swami himself said in the vachanamrut 78 of gada first chapter when that very god mounts a horse it appears that the horse is carrying him though in reality it is god who is the upholder of the horse furthermore when god sits on the earth it seems that the earth is supporting god yet in reality it is god who supports the entire earth along with its Im- its mobile and immobile forms of life moreover at night the light of the moon and oil lamp or an or a torch allow one to have the darshan of god or during the day the light of the sun allows one to have the darshan of god in reality however it is that god who pr- provides light to the sun and the moon and the flames of fire such are the magnificent powers of god despite this though god has become like a human for the sake of the liberation of the jews and he is giving darshan to me this is what the important thing for every spiritual aspirant to see divinity even an ordinary action performed by god now today for us bhagwan swami narayan manifested before about 200 years 
so his uh, his each and every actions he had performed at the time that is written in the scriptures but now when we read the scripture we have no problem we understand all those actions of bhagwan swami narayan as divine and redemptive even we think and believe that by reading and remembering again and again those actions of god performed at that time that will grant us liberation but now today what the main important things for us and what the main dangerous thing for us the important things and the most redemptive things for us is to pursue divinity in each and every action of our ekantik sadguru in our uh, meaning in the life of our puja guru ji because in the vachanamrut and in many other scriptures not only of our sampradaya but many other hinduism uh, many other hindu scriptures it is mentioned that bhagwan is always manifested in his ekantik sant all of the divine virtues of bhagwan which possessed by this ekantik sant and we have to do per, uh, we have to worship this such a sant as a god now we have attained the form of god in the form of bhagwan's murti and the another form of the same bhagwan is the ekantik sant because bhagwan swami and himself state in the 68 vachanamrut of gurudev first chapter that i am always reside in the eight types of form meaning idol and in the sant now bhagwan's murti cannot speak us bhagwan's murti never be have in such a manner that we can find any faults in the murti we have only chance to have a darshan of bhagwan's divine form in the uh, in the form of murti but when an ekantik sant as he is as manifest on this earth as a human being so he naturally behave and work as an ordinary human being still if we have such vision if we have divinity in our heart we can see we can experience many many divinity in each and every actions of such an ekantik sant now just an just for an example at the time of bhagwan swami narayan sri ji maharaj was once up, once upon a time he was in city of buj now the administrator of the city jagjivan mehta he was not a devotee of bhagwan but instead he is very cruel person and he is definitely against of this our swami narayan fellowship the another authoritative person is the sundar ji sutar he was a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan now bhagwan swami narayan when came to bhuj he always used to stay in house of sundar ji sutar when jagjivan mehta who was a non believer who who was an enemy of bhagwan swami narayan he knew about the rival of bhagwan swami narayan in buj after some day without any notice without declaring anything he sent his army a troop of army to house of sundar ji sutar just to arrest bhagwan swami narayan now when sundar ji sutar got some information regarding this mission of arresting bhagwan swami narayan he told maharaj he told to bhagwan swami narayan maharaj you have to do something because this is jagjivan mehta and he was very cruel person he can even kill you 
in this way sundar jutar has some disturbance in his heart who was worried because he had very low he has great affection for his god and now he was in tension so bhagwan swaminar himself at the time bhagwan wished to work as an ordinary human being so he instructs sundar jutar please give me some guide in your house so that i can hide myself in this way bhagwan saw a human like trait even though he bhagwan is supreme power bhagwan has a tremendous power and strength he can do anything anywhere and in any place any time he is a most powerful person but still he behave as an ordinary human being so he instruct sundar ji sudar that please hide me in your house so that they cannot arrest me now bhagwan is inside the house of sundar ji sudar and when the army came to sundar ji sudar and the commander of the army they, he asked sundar ji where are your swami narayan i have a warrant for him and i want to arrest him sundar ji sudar said i don't know about swami narayan he is not in my house if you want to search out if you want to search my house you can come in my house but here i said there is no swami narayan in my house when this conversation between sundar ji sudar and the uh, army chief happened at the same time bhagwan himself come out from the house and bhagwan said i am bhagwan swami narayan if you want to arrest me please arrest me but at the same time bhagwan shows a miracle bhagwan used his divine power bhagwan so bhagwan had used his divine power in uh, in such a way that all the army men and his commander they they can so uh they can see a uh, thousands and millions of army behind bhagwan swami narayan so now they have no chance to arrest bhagwan swami narayan and without delay without thinking for anything they run away for saving their life now in the same time these two types of actions can definitely flinch the heart of a normal or common devotees but if we are a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan we have from faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan by having the company of his ekantik sant then we have no problem at all in our heart in the same way today we have the important things to realize divinity even in human like action in the form of god we have only our pujya guru ji now we can also find out the same thing happen in the life of pujya guru ji if we are not able to develop from faith in his form then sometimes such human like actions of our pujya guru ji that will make us some disturbance in our heart and if we doubts in his actions that will very very dangerous for us as a spiritual aspirant now at the time of yogi swami's accident case when guru ji got message via phone then at the time 
he was very worried about this situation now what happened when in our sampraday all the saints and other devotees they knew about this incident they also phone guruji and in the phone and when anybody or any saint or devotee is meet guruji guruji always for a week call guruji at the time for a week guruji always said everybody just to pray f- for yogi swami's health yogi swami's life this is his only request for a uh, request for yogi swami's life to our devotees and other saints please pray to god for yogi swami's life not only this but even at the time guruji was crying just as an ordinary human being just see on the on, uh, just see the another incident just remember the incidents happened at the time of mansarovar yatra we know bharat bhai patel of illinois he was a member of that tour now he has no capacity as his health is not a normal the guide and doctors they deny him to go on up on mount kailas because on the high altitude there is very low level of oxygen and that's why his life is in danger so all the doctors the guide of the tour the organizer of the tour they all deny bharat bhai this is not good for you to go on mount kailas please stay here and down but still bharat bhai also he had decided in his mind not to go on mount kailas but still guruji has wishes for him to go uh, to bring him with uh, to bring bharat bhai with him on mount kailas and at the time guruji told him you just don't worry about anything your life is in my hand this is what his divine power he can merely or some accidentally speak out or we can find out in his life so now this same power he has in the case of yogi swami but still he at the time he behaved as an ordinary human being he was crying he was requesting everybody to please pray to god for yogi swami's health in this way if we have no from faith in our guruji at the time when we see such a human like behavior we have a major problem in our heart if we slightly doubt in his behavior and if we understand him that he is powerless that is the major drawback for as a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan so now this is what the divinity in humanity it is our duty if we understand each and every action of our true ekantik sant in the form of guruji in his each and every action if we perceive divinity then that will give us tremendous spiritual strength so that we can attain a divine bliss of bhagwan swami narayan now on the other hand if we perceive any single doubt in his any action that will become a uh, very dangerous for our spiritual life even that doubt can kill us as a spiritual aspirant so now we have attained the same god in the form of ganesh maharaj in the mandir as well as in the form of our pujya guruji 
so now it is our duty to perceive divinity even in his human like actions not only this a true devotee of bhagwan he always see each and every actions of bhagwan's ekantik sant as divine whether the action is divine or human like but still he has to develop such a state in which he can always find out divinity in each and every action of his spiritual master this is what divinity and uh, divinity in a human humanity so now please let we pray to bhagwan that he is the all doer he is the developer our divinity in our heart so that let we pray to him please maharaj grant us such as wisdom so that we can always find out divinity in each and every action of you by saying this jai swami narayan प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे नजर समीपे रहो अमारी ये घनश्याम महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बुलवेड घनश्याम महाराज pathmaker to our liberation pujapad guruji puja santo and all of you devotees jai swami narayan i want to start out with a hypothetical situation for you suppose that you are a really popular kid in high school all all the kids knew you and everyone admired you and it was just a good time in your high school and your friends you had many many friends since you were popular they invited you to parties time to time and you know that in these parties alcoholic beverages were being served but you still went to keep relation and to also socialize that was your main goal you went to keep a relationship with all your friends and to just socialize usually you didn't have any interest in drinking alcohol or doing any kind of other things besides that and you did that time to time you went with your friends and you enjoyed and then you came back home well what has happened that you didn't have a car so usually your friend jay would pick you up and then take you to the party and then drop you back off and it just goes on and on So one of these times your best friend let's say Adam your best friend he decided to throw a really big party at his home right 
So he's spreading word throughout the whole high school and everyone knows about it and it's going to go really big. His parents are out of town and it's going to be great. And he invites you, obviously, the first one because he's your best friend. So he wants you to come. I mean, you have no choice. You're bound to come, right? Because he's your best friend. So the day of the party, your friend Jay comes to pick you up. And uh, right when he's outside the door, he texts you on his phone, on your phone, saying, I'm right out on your driveway. Just come on out. So you're upstairs in your room and you come on down. You're ready to open the door and just head right out. And your mom stops you of course, and takes an interview. Where are you going? You tell her the usual, the usual excuse. I'm going to the movies with my friends, or I'm going bowling. Not really the truth that you're actually going to a party where alcoholic beverages are being served, and you just tell her this excuse. Usually this flies, and she lets lets you go all the time, not a problem. But this time, it was different. Your mom's like, you know, your grandmother's really sick. I want you to stay home and serve her. And you start to have a little oral kind of infliction with your mom. You start to fight with her. You know, tell her that, you know, you always let me go. And grandmother's been sick for like the past two weeks now. I don't understand why you're telling me to stay home this week. Usually, you always do it. Why do I have to do it? You know, you always do everything for her. Why do I have to stay home? I don't even know how to do her service. You make up all these kinds of excuses left and right, trying to wait, trying to get your way out of the situation because your friend Jay is waiting outside in the driveway, waiting to take you to the party. And she said, no, you know, I'm not having it today. You know, I always let you go out bowling or movies with her friends supposedly that's what she thinks and this time she just says no you're a little smart you know you're smart so you tell her okay no problem why because you know that if you disobey her order this time then she's not gonna let you go out the next time so to obey her orders is the only thing that will cause her to say yes the next time. That's why you say yes and you obediently stay home. So then you go back up to your room and then text your friend who's still waiting in the driveway, Jay, that, you know, I can't make it. Um, sorry, you know, my mom wants me to stay home and, uh, you know, help uh, serve my grandmother. Grandmother, And your friend Jay leaves and goes to the party. Your friend Adam, on the other hand, is texting you left and right, going crazy. Where are you? I thought you were going to come with Jay. Jay's already here. What happened? Asking you 50 questions. And you explain to him, this is my situation. He's really upset with you. But he said that you tell him that, you know, I'll make it next time. So then that night, you help serve your grandmother. Everything's okay. It's great. And the next morning... The next morning, you get a phone call from your friend Adam saying that, you know, I have some bad news. I said, what happened? Well, uh, you know, Jay, uh, he came to the party the other day, last night. And, uh, you know, we were doing our thing. And uh, he was driving back home. And he must have been drunk and got into a severe car accident. And now he's hospitalized. You don't know what to tell Adam. But the first thing that hits your mind is a quote that you read on your high school wall by an unknown author. The quote that you read states, you remember it. Sometimes... You're delayed where you are because God knows there's a storm where you're headed. Be grateful. That's what you remember. Again, I want you guys to understand all this, so I'm going to repeat it. Sometimes you're delayed where you are because God knows there's a storm where you're headed. Be grateful.
What does that mean? Well, that means that God is not against you, but whatever situation that is coming ahead might be or is harmful to you directly. So he's protecting you from the storm, you can say, or the situation at hand. So be grateful for that. In the same manner, today's topic is the protection of God. If you think about the hypothetical I gave you, then you can go back and say that your mom never stops you by any chance, right? Going to those parties. But why did she stop you today on that day? That's number one. Number two, even if she stopped you, you obediently said yes, trying to be cunning, that next time she'll say yes to going out. And number three, weren't you saved from a traumatic car accident because you were going to go with Jay from your home to Adam's party and then on the way back, you're going to you know, get a ride back. Jay was drunk. Due to that, he got into a severe accident. So that's number three. God protected you in these three fashions and kept you safe at home. Well, this is not a particular situation that might happen exactly in our life. It might be happening in outside world. But what I'm trying to say is some kind of these situations happen to us where we don't know why it's happening, but it's for our future. It's for our good that God is protecting us. How does God protect us? Just like how parents protect their son or daughter, just like how clothes protect us from the weather. If it's a winter storm, you need to wear a jacket or you need to wear a thermal, just like that. Just like how the magnetic field protects the earth. Just think about it. The UV rays that the sun is sending to the earth are very harmful to humans, but due to the magnetic field, they're very diluted and they have no effect on us. Or else there would be cancer and other mutations in our body. Let me give you even an easier example to understand. The secret service, the secret service of the United States, of the president. Now, the secret service, what it is, is, is a group of individuals who protect the president of the United States in any or every case. I mean, pretty much just like how the president, wherever he goes, that's where the secret service goes. No matter if he's in the interview or no matter if he's even going to the bathroom, they stand right outside. That's how protective they are of the, of the president because their whole life purpose, their whole, you can say, mission in life is to protect the president of the United States and his family. Just like that, God protects his devotees. But God has one rule. Come to my refuge, and I will protect you. It's not like in the outside world, ordinary people are also protected by God himself directly, you can say, because they have no understanding, they have no refuge, they have not taken any kind of, you can say, uh, surrendership to him. That's why Bhagwan does not protect them directly. But for us devotees, we have taken surrendership to Bhagwan. We have given up everything. We have taken refuge. We accept Bhagwan Swamiran as our Lord. That's why he is our protector. And we should firmly understand this. Even in Sadguru Gunatita and Swami's Vat, the first chapter, it's 22nd Vat, you can say, Swami says that God always protects his devotees. Just as the eyelids protect the eyes, just like the hands protect the neck, a mother protects her son, and a king protects his subjects. God protects us. Meaning no matter what, no matter in what kind of situations we are in, if we understand, if we keep Bhagwan with us, then for sure I can guarantee from my own experience that God is always with you. 
God is always besides you. Even no matter if your mind is so upset, or even if you are in such a difficult circumstance, or even if you are surrounded by evil people, evil company, or evil influence, which is very, very harmful. If you understand God to be with you, He is always with you. And if you remember Him, He'll be there to save you at any time because that's His job. You know, just like how the President has, the President of the United States has a job of serving the people of the nation. In the same way, God has a job of serving his devotees. Just think about it. The Supreme Lord himself, the one who creates, sustains, and destroys, his job is to protect his devotees who are like mere ants to him, who are like mere atoms to him. This is his greatness, but we tend to forget. That's why it's very difficult. Even in the time of Sri Maharaj, there was many, many saints who experienced this on hand. I'm recalled of a divine incident of Sadguru Brahman Swami and Sadguru Muktanan Swami. You know, in that time, Sri Maharaj always commanded his saints to go out and tour the regions for uh, spread of religious word. So at one time, Sadguru Muktan Swami, Sadguru Brahman Swami were outside doing vichran and, uh, you know, spreading word. And they were just crossing this region and they met this uh, jealous and wicked saint from another sect, from another religion. He asked and inquired, you know, who are you saints of? And Brahman Swami Muktan Swami explained, we were saints of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And right when he heard Bhagwan Swami name, he despised Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Many, many people despised Bhagwan Swami Narayan because of his rapid growth at that time. He right away tied both of Muktan Swami and Brahman Swami up to a wooden pillar. He tied him up and he took out this blade that he had and he started sharpening it. And he told Muktan Swami and Brahman Swami that you know what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to first cut your nose off and then first cut and then cut your ears off. So then you can be seen in the world that you have done something wrong. That was kind of like a punishment back in that back in those days. So while he was sharpening his knife, Brahman Swami started talking to Muktan Swami. They were both tied to the pillar back and back. And Brahman Swami was talking to Muktan Swami, saying that, you know, Swami, what are we gonna do? We're in this very, very difficult situation and our reputation will go down the drain because we are Bhagavan Swami and saints and this saint will cut off our nose and our ears and everyone will think that we've done something bad. What will happen? So Muktan Swami says, Don't worry, Swami. Bhagwan is Sarva Karta. He'll protect us. And Muktan Swami just waited. And in just a couple moments after telling Brahman Swami this, a devotee of Bhagwan Swami came and saw this wicked saint sharpening his knife and even saw the saints tied up and wondered first because he's never saw this before. What are you doing to these saints? The wicked saint said, you know, this is my plot. This is what I'm going to do is cut, you know, cut their nose and their ears off and make them look horrible in the world, you know, demolish or trash their reputation. And that devotee got very upset. He was very strong and brutal. So he threatened the wicked saint. And from that, both Muktan Swami and Brahman Swami were let go, freed by the devotee, and then they continued the return. But saying that, who would send a devotee of Bhagwan to that particular area where this scenario is happening? Just think about it. There's no one in sight, there's nothing going on, there's only two saints of Bhagwan Swami and this wicked saint. Who would think or who would even know to even cross that area? I mean, even if you're like the worst, you can say, robber or killer, you would never do this in mere public. It's not, it's not something that's logical, you can say. You definitely do it you know, behind closed doors or somewhere that's very isolated where no public 
is traveling back and forth. But luckily, at that time, Bhagwan himself sent his devotee and to save both of his saints. So Bhagwan is always serving us, you can say, and protecting us every time. Even to give you short stories, like Akhanan Swami's encounter with the four tigers uh, in the forest. Akhanan Swami was traveling and he got lost and four tigers came and they started to, you know, do um, Pradakshina around uh, Akhanan Swami and were ready to attack. And Akhanan Swami thought, you know, Bhagwan, you're my protector, you're Sarakarta. And if these, you know, animals, ferocious animals, they want to eat me, then may be it, I will be their food. Keeping this understanding, yet after thinking of that, Bhagwan Swamiran himself pervaded Antaryami, omniscient Rup, omnisciently inside each and every one of those animals and gave him a thought to leave the scenario and those tigers left. Now think about that. Wild animals, any wild animal, if they see anyone, anything moving that is not bigger than them, that is smaller than them, inside the forest, at in a dark situation, would they leave after meeting that person or that animal? No, because animals don't greet. They're not, you can say, engineered to do that. They're only engineered to hunt, kill, eat, sleep, that's it. This is their programming. Yet, somehow, the tigers just circled around Swami and then after that time left the scenario. Who is able to do this? If only Bhagwan was with Swami at that time in his protection, then this would happen. All in all, these are not any ordinary situations. Even if I tell you them, or even if we read them in a book, these are true situations that happen. But it's just a matter of experiencing Bhagwan. If you think about it, or let me give you a small, you can say, a task. Just when you're in a bind, just when you're about to really get into a really difficult situation and you know that, you know, this is going to be bad, just think of Bhagwan. Say his name and just think of him and ask that Bhagwan. You are Sarvakarta. You will protect me. I have firm faith. So please help me out. That's all you have to say. Even by just saying this small thought, Bhagwan is always with us. We don't know it. Bhagwan sees that this devotee is taking my refuge. Due to that, Bhagwan comes and serves you, comes and helps you out. So, these are many examples. I even gave you a small hypothetical. Even in you know, public life, outside life, maybe it's something that can happen in your high school. But the main thing is to understand that Bhagwan is always with us. Puja Guruji is always with us. It's just a matter of us thinking of them and taking their refuge. Just like how if we have pouring rain outside and you take an umbrella so you don't get wet from the rain. In the same way, we should take refuge under Bhagwan and his great saint. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.